Hello, welcome to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If we haven't met yet, I am Jordan Danae Ellis, Community Manager for Adobe Express, and I am here with Andy Lambert. Hello, Andy. Hello, Jordan. How are you? Good. I'm good, and I'm really excited about today because if you haven't joined any of our previous sessions, we get together towards the end of every month to talk about what has happened in the wild world of social media. Um, and <laughs> selfishly, I just get to learn a lot from Andy <laughs> in these recaps because he does all the hard work and all the research and we all get to benefit from it. So thank you very much for doing this for us. Yeah, always a pleasure. And there is a lot to go through. I mean, there always is every month, there's a, there's a lot, but it feels like uh, there's some, some really interesting stuff happening uh, this month. So yeah, a lot to cover over the next 55 odd minutes. Yeah, so thanks to everyone who's joined us in the chat. Feel free to drop questions. We will answer as many of them as we can while we're live, um, but also feel free to hang out with Andy and I. If you're not watching this live, watching a recap, you can ask us questions at any time too, and we'll, we'll, we will do our best to answer them. Uh, quickly, let's introduce ourselves. I, like I said, I'm Jordan Danae Ellis. I am a community manager for Adobe Express. So if you have any questions about Adobe Express, I'm your girl for that. But I also have run my own business for the past 13-ish years. So I have done a lot of grassroots marketing, mostly on social media without a huge budget. So that is my background in how I know things about <laughs> the internet and how to promote a brand or business. Um, and then Andy, you have a, a slightly different background. Um, yeah, different, but still fairly similar. So yeah. uh, once again, in small business, but predominantly um, you know, with within a kind of b2b so business to business context um so yeah I spent the last 10 years building a social media uh product which was called content cow which then got sold to adobe uh so now i am a senior product manager within uh, adobe express so working on the content scheduler product so yes lots of stuff that we need to keep abreast of when it comes to social media so like all of these social media changes and stuff i mean we have to understand this anyway because we're trying to build a product to, to help everyone support that so anyway as i said i'm going to stop waffling on because we've got a lot to cover basically so uh let's do it let's let's dive straight into it and um first call out actually jordan do you want to talk through this just for for a sec yes so we have a lot of information that we give out on our socials and here on Adobe Live, and we have bundled it all up really nicely for you all. So we have a Substack newsletter um, that we just started at the beginning of the year. But if you would like to sign up, it's basically us recapping everything that we've gone over in the past month. So it's like links to our live streams. It's links to templates that we think will be helpful based on what we've been talking about. It's extra tips about the world of social media. Um, so you can join, it's completely free. We send it out once a month and also would love to know if you have signed up, what you think is helpful about it. Um, but feel free to join if you like have a hard time navigating everything that's going on as many of us do. <laughs> this is everything <laughs> in one place, trying to make it nice and easy for you. Exactly, and all the recordings from all of the lives that Jordan and I do, you know, are on there too. So. Um, also, uh, not to forget, let's just do a quick call out on Content Scheduler because obviously you use it for your own brands as well, don't you? Jordan? I so actually I realized and I didn't even do it. I like I need this because especially with life being so busy, I don't know if this is relatable to anyone in the in the chat, but um, I forget things a lot. Like I forgot to promote this live stream today because I didn't get it into Scheduler. So I use it. And when I don't <laughs> use it, my whole content plan <laughs> falls apart. Um, but I think it's great. It is included in the Adobe Express premium plan. You can try it out on the free plan. But mo one of my favorite things is that there is no limit to the amount of content you can put in, which has not been the case with every social media scheduler that I've tried. So you can like really fill out your calendar. Um, and like we're showing here, Andy taught me this trick. You can also draft text posts and use that as like a way to guide what you want your content to be, even if you don't know it yet. So we've talked about like bucketing or like repeating pillars of content. You can say, okay, every, like I should do, every other Tuesday, I want to promote this Adobe live stream and then just put like a block in there so that you can take some of the staring at a blank page, trying to schedule your content out of the equation, which I think is great. 
Love it. Love it. Right then. Okay. Who's ready to nerd out on some social media stuff? Let's do it. We're going to start with some some data because there's there's been a lot uh, that's happened over the last month or so. So this is everything that's happened over the course of like end of January, over the course of February so far. Um, and my favourite report, and the fact it's uh, the fact I have a favourite report just goes to show how how much of a loser I am when it comes <laughs> to this stuff. Um, so yeah, so this report is one of the the best in terms of helping us understand the state of digital. So um, it's a massive report. There's 300 slides to it. So fortunately, jeez, thanks for through. reading all of that in advance. <laughs> I would never I'll tell you the most important stuff you need to know. Thank so. You. Um, so let's look at the the, the broad thing because I think this is interesting for everyone, right? So we've now over over the course of this report. So this report comes out every quarter. So we're now past eight billion people across the world. So our society's got rather big. Um, but active social media users, because this is the bit that I pay close attention to. So nearly sixty percent of the whole world's population now actively use social. So that when I say active, that means logging in once a month. So nearly the same amount of people that use social media as use the internet in general so basically what i'm saying here is that we're pretty much ubiquitous in terms of social media adoption it's if if you're of kind of adult teen or adult age you're pretty much on social it's incredible how widely spread this has become and how that's changed over the last year just looking at the the social media bit here because that's the most important one so that's grown three percent so another 137 million new people Jeez. have joined social and started using it every single month and if we look at how that's grown of course kind of growth rates have started to slow and that's expected basically it can't grow social media can't grow much more than where it's at um, but as you can see, it's just continued on the upward trajectory to get us to a place where we are now, where it's, like I said, pretty much total ubiquity. Yeah. Wow. Now, when we start to break this down from a platform perspective, because yes, lots of people are using social media, we get that, but like, where are they spending their time? And we're going to dig into that question um, a little bit more over the next couple of slides. So Facebook still by quite a distance the most used social media platform. So nearly 3 billion people logging in to Facebook alone. It's not just a meta suite of products. This is Facebook alone. 3 billion uh, monthly active users. Absolutely massive. So yeah, it's like like Facebook sometimes gets a bit of a bad rap and understand why. Um, but I think we'd be doing ourselves a disservice if we sleep on Facebook. It might be the oldest platform there is, but there's still a lot of potential. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. Um, and I think actually some of the latest changes from Facebook actually are leaning more towards being beneficial for small businesses in particular. So I think there's some good opportunities on Facebook and the audience continues to grow. YouTube is still one of those things. I say this quite a lot. YouTube is one of those platforms that I don't think features enough in many people's social media strategies because there is so much value that sits in YouTube, not just being discovered by um, new people and being able to grow followers etc like normal social platforms but it's also the kind of off-site seo value right so how people can discover mm -hmm. you through google search etc so there's a lot of value in youtube and particularly with how much youtube shorts is growing at the moment basically the way i see youtube shorts it's like tiktok two years ago where there was a huge amount of growth potential organic growth potential so we'll talk more about YouTube shorts as we go on, but just wanted to call that out in particular. The rest of the numbers, and I only look at like the, the top five here. I, I kind of gloss over WhatsApp because I don't really consider it a social platform really in the same as others, despite it being factored into this report. Uh, Insta, 2 billion users, so still growing well. Uh, TikTok's half that. TikTok's growth has slowed a little bit. It's not like it's going away anytime soon, but yeah, it has slowed because naturally anything that grows that quickly will tend to kind of plateau at some point so um tiktok is hitting that but a couple of things to, to call out as well snapchat and twitter have also seen significant growth over the last year as well i must confess snapchat is one of those platforms that i declared very early on i was like i'm too old for this i, don't I did it. the same so, thing <laughs> <laughs> so it's slightly thing. embarrassing <laughs> yeah so don't so, ask us your snapchat questions please <laughs> But I'd be curious to know if uh, if anyone who's watching is in the chat, 
um, uses Snapchat from like a business perspective rather than, you know, uh, using it for your own kind of hobby or fun perspective. Like I've never quite reconciled how to use it tangibly for, for business growth purposes, which is typically where my head goes to when I'm thinking about social media stuff. Sorry, lots of talking from me initially. Is there like any thoughts that you have on this? Anything you want to call out, Jordan? I mean, like you said, I'm not surprised conceptually that Facebook has that many more, but it is surprising just because I, I do forget. Um, like it makes sense because Facebook is the platform that I think everyone I know has one. You know what I mean? Like not everyone yeah, I know has Twitter. Yeah. Not everyone I know has TikTok, but like almost everyone has Facebook. So it makes sense. It's just kind of wild to see it played out like this. Yeah, exactly that. So what's that? About 40% of the 45% of the world's yeah. population actively on, on Facebook. Insane. Wild. So let's look at time spent. Now, we've seen oh, social media's grown. Okay. Lot, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting one. Social media has grown. It's used by nearly everyone. Uh, and some of the platforms have seen a huge amount of, of that growth. But then how much time do people actually spend? Because if someone just logs in once a month and doesn't really do much, that's a very little value to us as marketers or small business owners. So what we care about is the amount of time that people are spending on these platforms, because naturally, the more time that people spend on these platforms, the more chance there is for our content to be seen, because it's essentially more real estate, more inventory, as the social media platforms call it, more chance for our content to be seen. Now, we were observing the fact or thinking like social media time on social media would actually drop um post pandemic right because naturally all lots in our houses spend more time i know on i was gonna say i'm surprised there wasn't a massive spike in 2020 and then it went down yeah i was fully expecting yeah, exactly that. yeah i know and in fact it's kind of flat in 2020 and it went up a bit in kind of q3 2021 right so you know you can think that's we were still in the in the grips of the pandemic but it's gone up again you know yeah you know basically the whole of the the world has now lifted its restrictions but we're still consuming more and more and spending more time on on social media um we'll ignore the fact of what that means for society at large but we'll just uh, <laughs> but we'll just think about actually it's more opportunity for us to grow our businesses so we'll just think about it through that lens through the happy lens um so more people spending more time on the platforms now let's look at where that breaks down from a platform perspective because this is where it gets really interesting I was going to say, too, this is actually making me feel less terrible because maybe it's a little <laughs> bit like the the top ones are video. So maybe it's people like watching less TV and movies and watching more social media instead of just like devolving into puddles of being on our phones. That's how I'm going to think about it, at least. I think that's a, it's a really interesting call out. And uh, you kind of preempt a slide in a couple of Sorry. slides. Time. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's brilliant. I, th I think you, you've drawn the right conclusion there because media consumption habits have have shifted right particularly around like viewing just normal linear tv right our tv viewing habits have, have shifted and that's why like tiktok and youtube in particular i'm quite buoyant about the opportunities on these two platforms because they're taking a huge chunk of traditional tv mm -hmm. viewing lots of people are now consuming tiktok and youtube on their smart tvs right and that is a really interesting shift because that now means that for us as small businesses, we're now starting to appear in people's regular media consumption stuff. And that previously yeah. was only reserved for the biggest brands on the planet. Right. But not all of us are Kraft or Coca-Cola or whatever, you know, so that then represents a really interesting opportunity that someone might be spending their evening on their smart TV looking through TikTok um, or YouTube videos and that we have yeah. a chance for our content to be seen. So that's where the amount of time spent is so, so important for thinking about how we'll organically grow our businesses and the platforms that represent such a good opportunity for us as small businesses moving forward. But like notable mention for, for Facebook as well, that's a lot of time. You know, I thought it was yeah, much man. lower than that. So the fact that Facebook is above Instagram blows my mind. Yeah. I mean, I guess it makes sense based on all the other numbers we're looking at, but that's wild to me. Yeah, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. So yeah, really, really interesting that. So I think the, the top three are, are definitely ones to, to call out. But yeah, it gives you an idea of 
quite how much users are spending on on these platforms, which then gives us a bit of an inclination as to how much potential our content is, has to reach new people. So yeah, really interesting. Now, the final slide of like the really nerdy numbers from this report is this one. This is my favorite. This is the one that probably takes the most like staring at to deduce like what the hell is happening on this slide. So I was going to say too, I've given this a uh, tip before, but feel free to screenshot anything that you want to yeah. like deep dive into. This is available as a replay, but you can pause and like look into this because this is a lot of numbers to absorb in like 20 seconds. So it's a lot. It is yeah. definitely a lot. The, the kind of the message behind this, and I think this is such a really important important like point to think about when it comes to how we think about social media how we build our social media strategies etc so this number here represents the amount of users that are unique to the platform so that only exist oh. on one platform but what we can take away from this is that so few social media users are spending time on one platform people mm. are across multiple right so if we want to reach our audience we need to be thinking multi-channel multi-platform i've said this numerous times i'm like a broken record but honestly mm -hmm. i'll take this one to my grave so this one is such an important thing to think about because yeah i still hugely endorse like focusing and majoring on one platform right so jordan for you that's that's instagram right mm -hmm. yep for me or is LinkedIn. this linkedin yep yeah <laughs> so we each have like yeah. a platform where we spend our time and i think for People like Jordan and I, and if you kind of relate to this, you're a small business owner or you're trying to build a personal brand, et cetera, you know, you can't be everywhere. Definitely not. You've got no your normal life to live. But being on one platform, answering comments, engaging in other people's stuff makes total sense. Now, thinking about like what other platforms can you be on to drive growth? Now, being on them doesn't necessarily mean, you know, responding to everything or doing all of the best practice stuff that you usually hear. It is OK, you know, it is OK to publish stuff and not spend all of your time in engaging and engaging in other people's content. It is, from my perspective, it is OK, because if the content is useful enough and people and people interact with it or find it helpful, then it is OK. So. Um, I was I gonna wanna... say we talk I feel like that's one of my favorite tips to share is like we talk about this a lot you can obviously spend a lot of time being optimized for every platform and that's what a lot of like social media managers who do this full time do where everything is like perfectly curated to the platform and like you said as real people trying to actually have a life and not spend all of our time online I am fully with you that I think done is better than perfect so like putting something out Obviously, it should still be as good as possible, but in a lot of our other streams, we talk about how to like maximize your workflow to make one piece of content and use it on as many platforms as makes sense to. So I think tricks like that. Um, actually, that's really funny. We had a comment in the chat from um, Kevin who said they got a notification from LinkedIn about the stream and then went to Behance and then signed up for our newsletter. So like, that's just one way of like, <laughs> we are on three platforms right now. And one of them brought someone um, in through a notification who was happy to be here. So you never know like who's going to see what, where, but if someone really wants to follow you, I think no matter where they like discover you um, being on as many platforms as you can make sense. Exactly, exactly that. And that's really well said, Jordan. And this slide, um, like, feel free to screenshot away. And of course, this is being recorded and you'll get the slides if you uh, if you subscribe to our newsletter, because that's the easiest way for us to send it to, to people that are interested. But like, let's say, let's take Jordan, right? So let's take you. So if you say like, you're on Instagram, that's your, your primary thing. Um, but then you can just look through this and see how many Insta users are also using Facebook. So this gives you an idea to go like, okay, what other platform mm, should I yeah. put into the mix? You know, and then 74% on YouTube, 75%, well, we'll ignore WhatsApp for now, 50% on TikTok. So it gives you an idea to think like, actually, what other platform should I also amplify my content on to maximize the reach? Because if thinking like our audience is only on Insta, is a fallacy it's just that just isn't a thing so our audience is spread across multiple platforms so if we want to think about how we maximize the reach we need to be thinking multi-channel and this data like this does help us shape those platforms or choose those platforms wisely uh, that we also want to amplify our content on 
did have one question too, really quickly. Um, yeah, someone sure. asked about like smaller platforms like Mastodon. This, the data you're showing is just like the top volume or like population of platforms, right? So there are smaller ones. Exactly. Which made it. Definitely are smaller ones. So I've got a slide on Mastodon in a second, actually. <laughs> well, perfect real. So, then. Um, <laughs> Stay yeah, tuned. We'll cover that. Yeah, it, it's hard to get it across uh, every every single platform. But yeah, we'll talk about Mastodon. Cool. So, uh, Jordan, this was your call out here. So yeah. this, this data is a little, a little small. So um, hopefully you've got eyesight that's better than mine. Um, this is about media habits across different demographics, both countries and age. And the bit that I'm kind of focusing on here is this gray bit, which is about, you know, typical linear TV, TV is mm -hmm. to, to you and me, um, then social media. So where are people spending most of their time? And as you can see, there are certain countries where people spend more time on social media than they do watching TV. That's so it's, wild. Yeah, it's, and it's pretty clear. I think the only countries that are not are the more kind of western ones so so europe and north america so we're we're the kind of luddites um that we haven't moved over and embraced social media fully but it pretty much is yeah nearly neck and neck in terms of where we're spending our time but of course when you start to look at the age and gender demographic not gender age demographics rather of course the the younger demographics typically are orientating towards social media but that's not just in the 16 to 24 bracket 25 to 34 heavily social media first same 35 and 44 it's only when you cross 45 years old plus um does that cohort prefer um normal t or traditional tv as opposed to, to social which i think we'd all expect ultimately as you can see media consumption habits have shifted social media is becoming ubiquitous and as a result people are spending more time on social media platforms which means more opportunity for organic growth so um Hopefully it's all coming together. And I uh, said, so there's a lot of, lot of positive yeah. stories out of the back of this, to be honest. Yeah, so, uh, Sarah um, in the chat says, if I include my job, I definitely spend a lot more time on social than watching TV. I think that <laughs> is uh, real. I yeah. absolutely watch more TV than social media, but I'm also in the, actually, no, I'm in the age bracket that doesn't. So I'm a, I'm a unicorn, but <laughs> I love, I love <laughs> like, TV. <laughs> embrace your uniqueness yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so this is just a, a quick call out so all this data around insta on um it was actually quite a good bit of data so i wanted to call this out because sometimes we th we think oh right i need to create more instagram stories or i need to create feeds what should i do and i think this really calls it out something that i think we've known for a while but this this represents it really clearly Stories are really powerful for deeper connections. Stories are not great to reach new people. So um, this reach rate thing here, what that relates to is to the amount of people that typically see your content compared to your followers, right? So typically your reach rate is higher with, um, with a smaller audience. So this is your kind mm -hmm. of follower count here. We'd expect that, that's, that's no surprise here. But I think the, the key message here is that if we want to maximize the impact in the feed, yes, stories still have their place, feed posts typically will perform much higher. So if you're thinking about your Insta strategy and the different types of formats, I think this is really clear around some kind of directional suggestions around it. Mastodon. Yeah, here so, we go. Um, so this is, uh, this is supplied by Mastodon uh, directly, actually, this, this data. Now, um, it's one of those things where you typically see the media frenzy uh, kind of get whipped up around something that seems like it's a breakout success. So basically, they go viral because in the light of or in the wake of Twitter and all the carnage mm -hmm. that happened at Twitter, as we all know, um, naturally, a lot of people got frustrated and, went, and they went to other platforms. So kind of a knee jerk reaction. And then the media picked up on this and the media whips up the frenzy and it kind of compounds. And then we have something that's called going viral. Like I say this time, time again, I think it's such a good lesson. Jordan, you and I talk about this loads, but it's such a good lesson for every business and social media um, and how we think about social media. Mm -hmm. Going viral feels good in the moment, but does not, it does not usually work out over the long term. So when you start to zoom out and see over the course of multiple months, you typically see virality does not equal long term growth. So yeah. this doesn't mean Mastodon's going to die or it's going to go away, but given how it works as a platform, uh, if anyone's 
use Mastodon, there is quite a learning curve to it, um, of which some people like because it's like it keeps the kind of benchmark quite high for a certain type of user to 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 enjoy the platform. Typically, it's not necessarily going to become a mainstream thing, I don't think. Um, and we saw the same thing with with Clubhouse. Clubhouse has followed the same trend, like the hype cycle of like, oh, it's gone up and then it's kind of gone down and it's found its kind of normalized level of users of people that like it, etc. But don't, you know, it's not going to get to the level of like, um, you know, uh, Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or something like that. Same story with Be Real, followed exactly the same growth trajectory, right? Huge hype. Everyone goes mad for it. And then like like most things in life, you know, most things that were trendy at the time, then kind of that that peak disappeared and then it's kind of normalized. So for a long while, it was ranking at like number one on both app stores. Now it's like 118 or something. So once again, doesn't mean that it's going to die. We all need to give up on it. But naturally, it's it sometimes pays to be more circumspect with these new social media platforms. We might go, oh, should we be on Be Real? Should we be on this? Or should, like, just chill. Don't worry. Let the things play out for a bit. You know, there'll always be a little bit of first mover advantage for some of these. But there's no point if you're just going to go viral for a bit and then disappear. There's just, there's just, there's just no value in it. So sometimes it pays just to take a step back, think will this platform really impact my business are my customers there should we just see how it goes let's just keep an eye on it and then we'll see how it plays out and and we'll see if it's still right for our business in in a couple of months time well that would be my takeaway on this i was gonna say you can also grab your handle and not necessarily devote your entire life to doing it so you if you have you know a username that you have on all platforms you can grab that on a new platform in case you want it later um but not necessarily like uproot your entire content calendar to make it work. Definitely with you on that. Let's talk about some more positive stuff. So there's two platforms that the kind of hype cycle is over, but um, Pinterest struggled post pandemic, actually. Pinterest grew massively in the pandemic, struggled afterwards, but it's been on a nice upward trajectory. And there's some kind of good updates that are happening around Pinterest. They've just released a five minute idea pins. So idea pins are like their approach to oh, stories cool. essentially, but now we can, you know, it used to be limited to 60 seconds. Now, five minutes gives us a much better opportunity to tell our story. So, yeah, Pinterest has returned to, to growth. Um, oh, I skipped over a slide here. Uh, Snapchat also growing really well. But as we said Great. earlier, <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then LinkedIn is having a fantastic time of it as well. So it's, it's hit some record numbers. So 900 million. Uh, users and they're seeing record levels of engagement. So once again, like I've said said before, but um, LinkedIn is fantastic for organic growth and it's suiting like personal brands and small businesses better than it ever has done before. And I you started to spend a bit more time on. I know. On I mean, you really like you really convinced me that it was worth hanging out on, and it has been. Um, and I think one of my favorite things about it is, at least in my experience. It's not full of like spammy or like, I don't mm. know. I feel it. I feel like LinkedIn is more intentional. Like there's just a lot happening on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like there's just so much content there. And LinkedIn feels a little, yeah, like I said, more intentional. Like I, I think um, I get more value out of the time I spend there than I do on other platforms. That's really interesting, actually. But then I um, also like seeing my friends, you know, their new puppies and stuff. And that's not as much on LinkedIn. So it's a little yeah, bit of both. Yeah, like, it, I'm in, like, work mode on LinkedIn. Um, so I do like the personal touch of other stuff. But I feel like it's I feel like it's really good for that. Mm, definitely agree with that. Um, I made reference to this earlier when we were talking about kind of YouTube's growth. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, shorts is is a thing it really is 50 billion daily views uh youtube yeah. are pushing it hard they're ramping up new features we'll talk about some new features related to shorts but like i said this is this is tiktok two years ago so i, I expect there to be some some really good organic growth um because if you're creating video for like instagram reels 
it would definitely pay to repurpose them as YouTube shorts as well. That would be my kind of major take yeah. on this. That's what I do. My YouTube shorts would get like 10 views. So I'm not uh, the, the expert, but it's all repurposed TikTok or Instagram. All it takes is for, for one of those individuals to be the right person. And yep, that's go. right. So, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I am. <laughs> if you're ever feeling bad about your follower numbers, feel free to watch me. I think I have six followers on Pinterest right now and <laughs> get like max 20 views on most of my YouTube things. So uh, we're not all going viral all the time over exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, and it's important. Yeah, it's important to, to start somewhere and mm -hmm. yeah just don't be just don't be disheartened by it so as long as you've got your workflow down it's not taking you forever to try and do it yeah. um you know you'll be in a good place eventually you'll be glad you did yeah feature time right let's talk about let's the most see. important new features uh, that have come out we'll go network by network and uh yeah let's see where we go cool uh quiet mode for insta thank um, god for this oh man yeah I mean, like, what's your take on this, Jordan? Because I think we, we've spoken about this one before. I think so. I think there are two things that are really great about this. One is for your own sanity. If you want to just have a, a forced break, <laughs> basically, this is great. But one thing that I think is super good about this, and I've noticed from just doing my own like brand customer service, for some reason, it does feel like Instagram DMs, there's a little bit less um, understanding if you're not just there. Like everyone's on their phones, but not everyone wants to be like working all the time. So I think yeah. it's great to be like, hey, I will come back. I'm just not here right now. Um, so folks know they're not being ignored. You're just not online. I think that's a really good boundary to set. So yeah, I'm all for 100%. this. Yeah, I, I love it. Basically an out of office <laughs> for Instagram. Yeah. And I... I love and it. social media love doesn't it. normally have that. It's very expected to be like on 100% of the time and we mm. should not be. <laughs> so I think definitely this is great. agree with that. Definitely agree. Um, so this Nobody is what one... quiet mode sounds awesome <laughs> as our resident not always loving social media on all the time. I think that's great. <laughs> I'm with you, Cody. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree. Um, Instagram are pushing forward with more creator monetization tools. So whilst this won't be suitable for everyone, what this does mean is that uh, Insta attracting more of the kind of big creators, which also bring their following and communities with them. And this gifting allows the communities to reward uh, the creators based on certain things or what, whatever they, they deem appropriate. Yeah. And yeah, whilst many of us, like I said, you know, we won't we won't be the recipients of these gifts. But what that does mean is that when you get more of these like celebrities or personalities or creators coming to the, the platform and typically they'll move to where um, the monetization opportunities are, are biggest, that just gives us more opportunities to collaborate with those people. You know, we'll find those, those people that have those groups and communities talk about the things that are relevant to our business and strike up those collaborations. And that's where the opportunity for something like this sits. Now, this will go down well. This, um, oh my God, the number of posts that were like, make Instagram, Instagram again, and, you know, bring back our photos. Here you go. Exactly we're that. Doing it. <laughs> we're exactly doing it. We're doing it. Exactly that. So I, I take it a little bit of a pinch of salt, to be honest, but this is, um, these are words from Adam Mazzeri, uh, who is head of Instagram. Uh, if you're big on Instagram, uh, yeah, follow, follow him, um, because then you'll hear this stuff first. Uh, yeah, so lots of people complained, as you said, so they're focusing more on on photos. I have seen that. I have seen a corresponding impact to that, certainly because I only create reels for Instagram because Instagram told you it was all about reels. So I started mm -hmm. creating all the reels and you, I've noticed a d decrease in the reach of my reels. You you do feed content as well, not just reels, don't you, Jordan? So have yes. you seen any Yes, actually, impact? it's great. So I... I'm not a video person. I've said that a bunch of times. Anyone who has watched, I'm, I'm getting there because of, you know, TikTok, YouTube, Shorts, Instagram, all of last year. We're like, please only do video. But photos are what they're my go to, especially um, for my side business. Well, I mean, even for the accounts that I use for Adobe Express, like I make much more graphical, like flat, you know, content than video. Um, and same thing, you know, I do a ton of photo shoots for my brand that are photos. <laughs> so I definitely think photos first. And then I've started 
incorporating videos. But I mean, like I've said, I I have not ever gone viral in any kind of way. Like my none of my videos have ever really like done anything for me. Um, I'm still trying. Like I'm still doing it. If anyone needs like a pep talk, it's not just you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I if all I mean, if I could go back to the days where everything was photo and text only, that's my sweet spot for sure. So that now gives us for those that that spend time doing Insta and you're using maybe using Adobe Express to create your content as well. So it just makes life a lot easier. Let's yeah. let's be honest. Creating you know static imagery is is easier than creating video, no it doubt. Sure is. Yeah. Um, and you know they're rewarding it with with better reach of your content. So I I still think that like the general move is in the direction of a video over time. So it does mm -hmm. pay to to think about it, um, but. Yeah, this is a good short-term thing. Uh, this is also a very good short-term thing. Um, capture leads from business profiles. So if you've got an Instagram business profile and you've kind of you've changed it in your settings, so um, yeah. you know you have a personal profile, you have creator or business profiles, you can add a lead form. So a way to to capture leads. So maybe like subscribe to something, etc. Super powerful. I don't need to tell you why because I think everyone can work yeah. this one out. But a great way to make you know the content you create more intent driven so super powerful that. that's great uh, they've launched story memories a few of you might have seen this uh, so oh, when you're looking at your cool. stories at the top of the feed yes yeah it's quite it's a useful feature and i particularly like this one on the right like where you can see like your calendar of yeah. when you put stories out that's quite cool so uh, i mean that's that's great just to reshare them potentially or potentially repurpose them because Instagram, this is a previous update from a couple of months ago, they allow you to repurpose your stories as reels as well. So, you know, this could be a nice opportunity to go back, look at some of the stuff that you've done before uh, and go like, how can I repurpose it? Because, you know, reuse, repurposing, um, still an underused tactic and it should be everyone's go-to really if we want to. We all need to be consistent. We all need to create content, but like reusing, repurposing um, is definitely so a, a strong way to do it. So yeah, very useful feature. You'll also notice as we've spoken about Reels a yeah, couple of times. this is funny. I was ba not baffled, but I was like, where did this come from? <laughs> well, I guess it's, it's maybe, I don't know this for sure, but like, is this the evolution of hashtags? Oh, uh, you know, because hashtags Possibly, were always a yeah. bit of a kind of like hack, really, to be like, yeah. all right, we'll we'll make it relevant around this topic. That's really what hashtags typically are. Yeah, all they are is true. a signal of a topic. So, you know, is this potentially where they're going to? Um, and it, yeah, it's an interesting one. I would certainly recommend um, if you're doing reels, you'll be able to see that when you're creating your reel. Uh, add the topics, just make sure you're kind of adding the relevant ones, because naturally, reels is more is less about serving content to your followers reels is more about like getting discovered by new people right um and that's where the opportunity is so make sure you're tagging the topic correctly so that we maximize our chance of instagram's recommendation engine picking it up mm -hmm. and if someone's interested in uh dresses and skirts here then they have a higher chance of being shown the relevant yeah. content if if you're kind of like a fashion brand like like you are, Jordan. And this is probably the kind of thing you can kind of find your tag once or twice. Like probably your content is all in the same vein, so you don't have to like look through this every time. Like correct, if yeah. you're doing fashion, you'll probably stick with styles and trends or one of those and do it most of the time. Definitely, and it's it's less about kind of like guessing. Oh, which hashtag should I use? Yeah. Should I like like all that kind of stuff? Like. Yeah, we can still we can still use our hashtags, etc. The value of that hasn't gone away. No more than four is the guidance. So, but yeah, these topics are just much simpler, right? Because yeah, as you say, you're not going to try and game this. Right. <laughs> you're going to fit into a topic, and that is what it is. So uh, yeah, be interested to to see how that goes. Um, this is quite a simple one, um, but if you have a closer knit community, you can choose who you want to share your reels with because it might be something more personal that you want to only share to your kind of insiders, really, or you're like your your close knit community now got a bit more control over whom you send your reels to. That's cool. And then uh, probably save the best to last here is uh, broadcast channels. Now it's quite similar to these uh, group profiles that we we're talking yeah. about and the community chats that we spoke about last month this what this broadcast channel is is 
in kind of in the same way, I don't know if you've ever used Telegram, but it's kind of the same way as like a WhatsApp group as well, where basically you can get people to sign up for these Instagram channels. So like this is the meta channel. Anyone yeah. can join. And that means you can broadcast a message and it will be received by everyone in their DMs. So uh, there is no better way to communicate with people. We don't we're not trying to get our content seen in, in the feed. We're now able to communicate at mass with DMs, provided people have kind of opted into opted this. In, yeah, cool. Because what Instagram have noticed is there is a trend for more people to converse in a DM as opposed to um, interact in a feed. That's a general trend that Instagram have been seeing. So I think this isn't available to everyone. This is like, like this is hot off the press, but this is definitely something for us all to think about because I think everyone will be like, yeah, this is a this is a cool idea. Uh, just really quickly, um, yeah, Robert in the right. chat said Instagram need to do a new app to make it easier to post um, from desktop. And just a little call out, Adobe Express does have content schedulers. So if you want to post, because I understand that wanting to post from your desktop, if that's where your files are, or it's just easier for you, because typing on a keyboard is a lot easier for me than typing on my phone. Um, just a little plug for the Adobe Express content scheduler. Good call out. That makes it, and you can, you don't have to schedule, you can like post now or in like a minute. Um, so if you don't want to plan out and want to do sort of native in real time, you can also do that. Definitely agree. Just notice the time. I'm going to speed up with some okay. of this. There's so much going on. Um, I will call this one out particularly though. So Meta are launching a paid for subscription to Instagram and Facebook in the same way as, as Twitter blue. Mm -hmm. um, that is a very interesting thing to keep an eye on. You don't need to do anything about this right now, uh, but what they have said amongst all of the other stuff that you get with it, it includes increased reach to your audience. Yeah. So are social media platforms going to become a pay to play platform? Uh, and are we going to be more, are they going to advantage those that subscribe versus others? It's going to be an interesting one to watch. This isn't rolling out yet. This is still kind of a planning phase, but I want to give kind of early notice of of this um and i can't imagine this is going to go down very well with many people because I agree making making something paid that previously was free just never goes down well anyway so uh yeah we'll we'll, we'll see we'll keep an eye on that one um right facebook we can add collaborators to reels jordan and i talk about this all the time mm -hmm. we love collaboration so when you invite someone it means it appears in both your feed and whoever you're collaborating with so super important to get our content seen uh love this one we can turn our lives into a reels jordan and i do lots of uh, mm -hmm. facebook lives so now we can easily chop them up and turn them into reels That's i think great. Facebook and Instagram have done a lot around repurposing content and helping us create our reels. So this is just a real useful feature. Uh, when we're creating our reels as well, we can save them as draft and download them as well, which is really useful, especially as like the, the video editing stuff gets stronger mm -hmm. within, you know, when we're creating reels or and TikToks too, you know, um, we don't we don't have all the time in the world to edit our videos. So now we can save it. Great. Twitter, um, we can now upload a 60 minute wow. video uh, if so long was a blue subscriber. Who's watching a 60 minute video on Twitter? I have no clue, but um, it's there if you do long form content. So <laughs> um, they've also done 4000 character tweets and everything is getting longer. Great. It's all getting longer. <laughs> um, so, I mean, Twitter threads have always been um, yeah. popular, so I'm going to be curious to see how um how this takes off um but to be honest there are very few platforms that really kind of emphasize the written word linkedin is one of those uh twitter is another one of those so mm -hmm. for those that are more into writing because not everyone wants to be in front of video not everyone's you know wants to create like beautiful images some people just like to write um uh, more meaningful things and some people like to consume that type of content too so there's definitely value in it um, I like this one as well. This is blue for business. All these first three things are all about kind of Twitter's paid for subscription offering. But now we can associate empl employees to a business oh. too. So um, so that can be quite powerful because now it allows for some kind of like employer advocacy type of approach. Cool. We can also now boost posts on Twitter. So this works well on other platforms like um 
uh, TikTok, for example. And this isn't boosting posts from like a business perspective. This is from an individual profile. So, you know, we've always been able to do it from a, like from our business accounts, but now from our individual accounts, you know, we can say, I want to get more engagement on content. So let's say we just want to boost one thing, you know, we can now kind of pay for that if we want to. I do use that occasionally, it's a similar thing on TikTok, and it has been very, very effective. Um, the swipeable feed is very useful, however. This is very cool. So um, you have one uh, feed that's kind of for you, which is like recommended content. And if you swipe to the left, I think, oh. uh, you just see content from those that you follow. And however you've left it is how the app will be moving forward. So it actually allows you to really nice. define your Twitter experience, which, which is cool. And also now um, view counts on tweets and yeah. now public as well. So we can we can see those really quickly. Uh, we had a question about discord in the chat and we will oh, do yeah. a video deep dive. Like, a, do we have any insights? We will do a video deep diving into like community mm. platforms at some point in the future. So stay tuned. We will do. Yeah. In a not too distant future, actually. Yeah. So um, LinkedIn, small things are testing out, giving like suggested topic tips. Um, so when you're creating a post to help kind of allow you to to unleash your creativity um so it's a really simple trick but to be honest there's quite a lot that we're also doing within the adobe express world as well to help people like get inspired around the things to post to but newsletters is definitely an interesting thing so if the written word is something that you're into newsletters on linkedin are super powerful they keep on improving features around them so we can now kind of take links and embed them on our sites too. So if we have a website and we want to drive subscription of our newsletter, we can simply take that code and allow people to subscribe to our LinkedIn newsletter directly from our website or other sources. And if anyone searches your name, um, it will then present your newsletter. So it kind of like raises up the profile of, of cool. your newsletter. And we can also give it SEO titles and descriptions. So our newsletters are now for the first time discoverable outside of LinkedIn, which is super powerful because usually social media is a bit of a walled yeah. garden with the exception of um, YouTube and Pinterest. So now with LinkedIn, if people are searching for a social media newsletter, for example, they can go ahead and find that off Google. So lots of value in that. TikTok, um, they're pushing loads of like features for live. So if you fancy okay. like trying to drive engagement on live, we can now have a like a guessing game of draw and guess. That's really Bit fun. Random, I'm sure but... for a lot of Adobe fans, that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You operate if you work in a creative community, this can be a, a really cool thing. So rather than being like a live, hey guys, just thought I'd go live kind of stuff, we can we can have That's a lot really more. Really silly, but I like it. Yeah. Um, same thing as we saw with, with Facebook Reels, we can now save our TikToks for later use. There's a whole bunch of other things we can do as well, but most importantly, we can now save videos without a watermark. We like Great. this, Love. so we can use it elsewhere, like we can Beautiful. repurpose it as Reels, etc. Um, and we can also edit our posts once we've published it, Thank which God is for that. <laughs> Man. too right, too right. Um, SEO trick. Lots of text here, but I'm going to give you the summary. This is so, so powerful. TikTok are leaning heavily into SEO. More people are using the search functionality in on TikTok than just scrolling through the mm -hmm. feed, right? So there's a huge potential. So your kind of hack here, or your trick, if you want, is that if you search, you know, let's say you're a coffee shop and you want to look at Starbucks. These are this what we should show you is the most frequently searched terms just in the same way that google shows this so include those keywords when you're putting in your caption Smart. for your video because now we've got 2200 characters to play with on tiktok that is going to massively improve the discoverability of our content so basically putting a bit of kind of a seo hat on when we're thinking about our tiktok content will really aid discovery this is also very useful tiktok carousels are performing incredibly well. So it kind of seems a bit of an alien concept, only video, but um, here is a bit of a guide as to how you upload like a carousel, so a multi-image post. Um, they are performing very well. So if, for example, you're doing lots of carousels on uh, Instagram, they're working well, why not give this a try? Like, it's like, easy. Just repurpose if you're already the doing it, thing. it's easy, yep. Repurpose it, give it a try. And finally, for YouTube, uh, they're improving analytics to help us understand are our subscribers being driven by our long form content or our short content, which can be good to help us understand what we want to invest more in. 
and just general more features coming to shorts where we can uh, choose our thumbnails, add our, add our location as well, because obviously YouTube's really mm -hmm. powerful once again from an SEO perspective and search. And there we you have did it. made it. We have six wow. things to summarize. Perfect. Social media, massive impact on society, time spent on the platforms continues to increase and the usage in general of social continues to, to increase. So honestly, you know, continues to be one of the most impactful way to grow our businesses. Uh, Facebook continues to invest in reels, as does the audience continues to grow on Facebook. So I think, you know, Facebook reels is a really interesting thing to lean into if we want to drive growth. I'm seeing lots of other fellow creators see fantastic results on Facebook with reels in particular. Similar thing, YouTube shorts will have great growth potential. Feel free to kind of like repurpose and test some of your other um, you know, real orientated or TikTok orientated content on, on YouTube shorts because I believe there to be good growth there. Um, LinkedIn continues to be a real strong platform, record users, great organic engagement, good SEO value. So we can be mm -hmm. discovered, especially for newsletters outside of the platform means it's a really strong platform. Um, Twitter, along with um, like Facebook and Instagram, orientating more towards and exploring more of this kind of subscription platform. So we don't need to do anything with that right now, but definitely something we'll be keeping a close eye on. And Instagram refocusing on photos, focusing more on communities and those like broadcast channels as well could really reinvigorate reach. So there seems to be some good opportunities coming out of Insta. And that is that. So we made amazing. it. Amazing. We did it. Um, and like we said, these are our social media handles. So I am at Jordan Danae Ellis and Andy is at Andy R. Lambert. If you are watching this as a replay and not live and you have questions about anything in the deck or have questions about Adobe Express in general or social media marketing in general or what else are we experts at? Um, you can try to ask us anything. You can, uh, my DMs are open. Um, and Andy loves responding to comments, especially on LinkedIn. So if you have any questions for Andy, <laughs> feel free to head over to LinkedIn. I think we actually answered all the questions live, which I'm so That's happy it. about. Um, but yeah, like I said, we are here and available for you. We do this towards the end of every month. So if you're curious and want to check out like the past couple months, you can go to the Adobe Express YouTube and in um, just search Get Social and you'll find all of our videos, which include these recaps. And also we've been doing social media platform deep dives. So we did Facebook and Instagram, right? That's Correct. What we've done. Yeah. And then LinkedIn is next. LinkedIn um, is next. Yeah. And like we alluded to, we will talk about community platforms like Discord. We have a lot of social media platforms left. So we, um, yeah, we have that coming up. Am I forgetting anything? No, I think you've got it. Just a quick call out just to make sure um, like if you want to keep up to date with all of this stuff, we just, yeah, we'll try and bundle this all on on the newsletter. So, yeah, you'll yeah. get the slides, you get the recording and also get any of the other kind of key takeaways, key insights um, and also post ideas and templates that you can use. So it's just the best way of us kind of keeping you up to date with um, with what happens every single month, because it's a big time commitment to, to take an hour out of your day to to watch yeah. this um so at least then you can get it in bite size and you consume consume it whenever you want so i think the link to that i know it's not on the screen right now but hopefully it's in the chat somewhere yeah Co cody dropped it in the chat which awesome. is very kind of her um and we had one last question which we were talking about if you want to schedule directly to instagram from desktop highly recommend checking out the adobe express content scheduler so if you have questions about that we've done so many videos where we explain <laughs> content scheduler you can go to the adobe express youtube channel there are tons of videos about scheduling content there. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Like I said, I am at Jordan Danae Ellis all over the internet. Um, and Andy is at Andy R. Lambert. And thank you all so much for joining today. Thank you for being such a lovely chat. And we will see you next time. Bye, see everyone. You next time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>